Good morning, I'm Mr. Clark. Today we're gonna to discuss a little more detail about 8NS1 and the number system, talking about how to identify rational numbers, therefore we know that they're not irrational. So we have the repeating decimal, and the repeating decimal is rational because we know what's happening next. But in order to prove that, we have to know that zero decimal three repeat is a fraction because all fractions are rational because that's a ratio and that's the base of rational. So we're going to take this number, 0 0.3 repeat. We're going to manipulate it by saying it times 10 in order to make it an imaginary whole number. So I'm going to say it times 10 and we use fancy F. So that variation just means fraction. So we're trying to figure out if it's going to be a fraction. So in this process, this is 10F. And when I say 0.3 repeat times 10, imaginary, I have three. And then I'm gonna write my repeat because what I'm trying to do is to take my repeat away in order for you to see that it is a fraction. So the way I have to take it away is right here. We look in this aspect of it right here, we're gonna say, how many place values are between my decimal and the repeat bar? There are no digits. So therefore, it's 1F equals. Now this value here of this 0 has to be equivalent to move. So in order to keep everything aligned, that 0 has to come here. Okay, now when I say it times 1, if I say 0.3 times 1, it's that number itself. So therefore I have 0 0.3 repeat. And if you have your repeat above each other, then you know that you're following the right rules and it's going to work out. 10F minus 1F is 9F. Three, you're going to divide both sides by nine, and I have fancy F equals three ninths, which reduces to one third. So one third is a fraction, therefore that's rational. All right, so let's look at the next one, kind of going a little deeper into this aspect. We have zero decimal, zero, three repeat, which this one would look close to the same as that one. This one is like this, and this one is just one place value smaller. Okay, now, in the aspect of this, how do I make this turn into an imaginary whole number? I say it times 100. Fancy F equals, when I say it times 100, I have three decimal, three repeat. The reason I don't put this zero there is voided out after it has no value. If I put zero, three, decimal, three repeat, it's not filling in the void that I need. So in this aspect, I go back to look at how many digits are between my repeat and my decimal. So I have one digit, that's one zero, and that's 1F. That gives me 10F. Moving values to make equivalency across equations means this zero that's here. Now when I say this times 10, I have 0.3 repeat. So after I do this, I come over here and I have 90. F equals 3 decimal 0. Divide both by 90. And fancy F equals 3 over 90, which means fancy F equals 1 over 30 when you divide both by 3. Now the last one has a little different perspective. But I want to show you a little further how it moves. So I have... 0 0.246 repeat. So how do I make that an imaginary whole number? I have to say it times 1,000. So it's 
1,000 fancy alpha equals 246 decimal repeat. Taking my repeat away by subtracting it here. How many digits are between my repeat and my decimal? One, two, that's two, zero values. One, so I have to say it times 100 to make the proportion. This zero comes here, keeping equivalent values. And then when I say this times 100, that gives me 24.6 repeat. Once again, I know that when my repeat bar is under my repeat bar, then I know I've done it correctly. So now I have 900 F equals 222. Divide both by 900. That gives me fancy elf equals 222 over 900. Divided by 2 gives me 111 over 450. And the divisibility rules state that if you add all the digits up and they're a multiple of 3, then you can divide it by 3. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, so I can divide that by 3. So when I divide 3 into this, I have 37. I divide 3 into 450. I have 150. And I know 37 is prime, and 150 is not a multiple of it. Therefore, I'm as far as I can go. So when I do that, the way I can check and make sure it's right is I put this in the calculator. So when I put in the calculator, I'm going to put in 37 divided by 150. And on the calculator, it says 24666667. Don't get confused about it stopping at that point. All the iPhone is doing is rounding that last digit to stop it at that point. Because when I flip it, it goes a little further and it's still throwing the 7 at the end. It's just giving you that estimation. Thank you.